today I have the pleasure of speaking with Pierre Gauthier from Oxico Resources Canada. How are you today, Pierre? Great, Tracy. Thank you. How about you? Pierre, let's just hit the ground running here. You've had numerous news releases come out just in the last month with two off-take agreements, one for tantalum and one for tin. How about yeah. we start there? Okay. Well, you know, we're in the rare earth business, but the byproducts are as important as the rare earth themselves. Uh, let me jump into Brazil. Uh, it's 30 million tons of tailings. It, it has a 0.65 tin content. It's got niobium, tantalum, and monazite. So what we're looking at is to start off by producing a concentrate of tin with offtake agreements for tin. It's a large market, an easy market to access. Uh, secondly, do offtake agreements for, for columbite, both niobium and tantalum. And the result of all those concentration efforts will be a monazite concentrate for rare earths. All right. So, so our business, is, you know, and the nice part about this project compared to any other exploration project, it's there's 30 million tons there. It's been mined historically. Tailings are fairly homogenous. And it's been studied by two level governments before. So uh, it puts us on third base in terms of uh, a project, in terms of cash flow, et cetera. Speaking of being on third base, of course, I wanted to warm up the investor intel audience on your Rare Earths recent announcement, which is significant. Your second trade of Rare Earth ore from the DRC. Uh, how about a couple of highlights on that for us, Pierre? Well, the first highlight is 60% total Rare Earth content. Second highlight, the neodymium content is over 15%. And that is material we've purchased as is in the ground. So, so let's make a comparison between that and what's happening with Mountain Pass. So Mountain Pass has 7% total rare content in the ground. They, it's hard rock mining. They crush it, grind it. They have a billion dollar plant to, to create a concentrate that ends up being 60% rare earths and about the same amount of niodium, et cetera. So we haven't even bought a pick and shovel and we're buying it from people that are mining it for us on our own concessions. So that activity is proving up the content of our concessions while we convert to an industrial operation. And of course, everyone's telling the world we don't have a supply chain in place, but you're actually, you have the feedstock, you're yeah. actually supplying it. And yeah. on top of that, you have some extraction technology. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, I, I can do that. I'll just make it one more comment on the supply chain, you know, and uh, we just talked about tin, for instance, uh, that's being produced nearby where we are. So geologically, tin, tantalum, niobium, and rare earths are really associated together geologically. And I'm finding that a lot of, like these tin tailings are a really great example of that, you know, so tin got taken out and then you've got all these other minerals left behind. And in a competitive world, if we can be making cash flow from tin and niobium, and those are tremendous credits against rare earths and reduce our cost of producing rare earths just about down to nothing. Okay, so, so, so that's an important thing. Now back to technology for a second. So I've dealt with a competitive edge on the mining side where sands are better, lower capex, lower opex than mining hard rock for sure. And, um, and you know, the technology for processing rare earths is, is even a bigger challenge in North America because all that was transferred to the Chinese 30 years ago and they developed all the processing. But We've been a, a company very focused on new processing methods, uh, started five, six years ago in nickel and achieved good results in that. In the last two, three years, we've turned to rare earths to do it. So we have a system based on ultrasound. You get a kidney stone, you go to the hospital, they do ultrasound to break down that stone so it exits your system. Apply that to mining now, you crush your ore, you put it in, in water, you put some acid in there. And if you put ultrasound, it'll take that grain of sand and break it down into nanoparticles so that your acid gobbles it up much faster and collects the metals that you're seeking from the host rock. So then you're into a one hour process of recovery of metals as opposed to 10 or 12 hours, makes a huge difference in CapEx and OPEX. So we have patents issued by the US government, Canadian government on that. And then we're continuing to work <clears throat> after you put your metals in solution, how do you separate them? How do you get these metals in elemental form? Because you can't send a concentrate to GM uh, to put in the, in, in, the, in the magnets. You need to sell neodymium at 99.9% .9 to them to be able to do that. So we're look, working on the back end now, which is typically the major companies such as Linus and so on are using solvent extraction, which is fairly tedious and capital intensive. And we're looking at totally mechanical means of doing it. Well, I'll tell you, Pierre, I know that my phones are going to be ringing off the hook when we put this interview out. So what I'm going to do 
is thank you for joining us today. And then we're going to have you do a critical materials corner with Byron King and Jack Lipton. So thank you for joining us today, Pierre. As always, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Tracy. Look forward to it next time. All right. Thank you.